5.4 combination of transformations okay so this is an extension of 5.3 as it says down here um, where we have single transformations and now we're just going to combine them into by multiplying matrices so we the idea is that one matrix followed by another um, are the combination of two um, transformations but the idea here is if it's if we've got the matrix PQ or the, or the product PQ, that means we're doing matrix we're doing transformation Q first followed by P. So when we work out a product, that will be a single transformation, but it'll be the same as doing Q first followed by P, whereas QP would be the other way around P followed by Q. So it's important you know which way around it goes because when we're multiplying out, so if we have um, let's just if we have um, uh, a P and a Q uh, matrix. When we combine those, when we when we're combining, uh, when we're applying it to a point, we would multiply. We would do this one first, and then we would do this one on the result. So this is this one next to the coordinate or the thing you're trying to transform gives you um, the first transformation followed by this one because we have to work this one out first okay so we're just we're just combining the skills from 5.1 and 5.3 so matrix multiplication and understanding the transformations on a unit square so let's have a look at um, some questions on this okay might be a good idea if you stop the video and have a go at these see if you can do them if uh, if not then just watch and see how it's done okay so matrix m is this transformation describe geometric the transformation represented by m so when we're looking at a transformation we're thinking about what happens to the the unit that unit points the, all the units square we're not worried about this point but this point here which is one zero and this point here which is zero one are the two we're interested in so this this first pair tells us where this one's going and it's going to zero one so this is actually going up to there so um, and then this one minus one zero minus one zero means this point is coming down to here so this one's going up to there this one's coming down to here so they're both rotating anti-clockwise so this is an anti-clockwise rotation of 90 degrees about zero zero as I saw it in the last video um, 5.3 um, the uh, always always rotations about zero zero okay uh, m squared is going to be another rotation um, so if we do this 90 degree anti-clockwise rotation and then we do it again that means it's uh, combined to be a 180 degree rotation about zero zero we don't have to say which direction because because 180 degrees is the same both directions okay question two um, Two transformations, reflection on the x-axis and rotation clockwise about the origin through 90 degrees. So that one was an uh, anti-clockwise rotation. We want to go um, clockwise this time and then we've got a reflection on the x-axis. Work out the single matrix which represents the composite transformation A followed by B. Now we could work out the individual matrices which we're probably going to need for part B um, and then multiply them together or um, remembering that A followed by B is actually B A um, because you, you want to, you want to do A first then followed by B um, or we can just think about what happens to the points and then we can just get the, the, the combined matrix at the end so um, this point starts at 1 0 it's reflected in the x-axis which means it's reflected in this line because it goes nowhere this one actually comes down to here to 0 minus 1 so that's been reflected down to there and that stayed the same and then we're going to rotate it 
um, 90 degrees clockwise. So this point is now going to move down to here, and this point is going to move up to here. So this point didn't go anywhere, and then it rotated down to here. So the matrix for that is just going to be 0, minus 1, because that's the way it's going to end up. That's the coordinate. 0 is the x coordinate, minus 1 is the y coordinate where it ends up. Um, the b what would normally be your b point on the, on the unit square starts off by reflecting down here and then rotating over to here so it's going to end up at this point which is minus one zero so that's our second part of our transformation so we can just put like that and that's our combined transformation if we did it the other way we could do the uh, reflection in the x-axis so um, this one doesn't change so that stays at one zero this one flips over so that becomes 0 minus 1 so that's reflection in the x-axis rotation 90 degrees so this one moves down to here so that's 0 minus 1 um, this point that was originally up here would move down to there so that would be 1 0 so that would be that if I multiplied um, that by that um, um, this one actually b times a I should get this so 0 times 1 times zero, 1, 0 gives us the 0. Um, minus 1, 0 times that gives us the minus 1, and so on. Does the composite transformation B followed by A give the same image as A followed by B? Explain your answer. So that's B followed by A. Let's have a look at what A followed by B is. Um, again, we could just work this out by thinking about what the combined thing gives us and then writing down the matrix. Or as I'm going to do here, we can do the matrix multiplication. So we've got 1, 0, 0, minus 1, times by 0, minus 1, 1, 0. That's matrix B, that's matrix A. So 1, 0 times this, um, 1 times 0, and 0 times minus 1 is 0. 0 times 0, zero minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. Uh, 1, 0 times 1, 0 is going to be 1, because the 1 times 1 and the 0 times 0. And then 0 times that and 0 times that is going to be 0. So you end up with 0, 1, 1, 0. Um, and that would be um, like a, a reflection in x equals y, because these two points are just swapping over. OK, and there's two more questions. So look at these two. Have a go at these. Pause the video. Okay, we've got the matrix A is such that A squared is equal to the identity matrix I. But A is not equal to I. So we can't just get away with putting I squared or A equals I. By considering transformations in the XY plane, work out a possible matrix for A. So we want something that when we do it twice, takes us back to where we started. So one example of that would be any, pretty much any reflection. Okay, so we could have... Um, possible matrix for that would be um, what I just said in the last thing so we, we swap the X and Y over so 1 0 goes to 0 1 and 0 1 goes to 1 0 that would work um, we could let's just think about this we could have a reflection in the the x-axis um, which would, would move this one down here this one would stay the same so we could have um, 1 0 0 minus 1, so that reflection in the x-axis, or reflection in the y-axis where this goes to minus 1, 0, and this stays the same as 0, 1. These would all work, and we could do a 100, the only th thing we could do is a 180 degree rotation, so this comes down to here, and this goes across to there, so this comes across to minus 1, 0, and this goes down to 0, minus 1. And I think it's fairly obvious that if you multiply these by themselves, you end up um, back where you started. Okay. Uh, here are three transformations in the xy plane: x, reflection in the x, reflection in the y, rotation. Using use matrix multiplication to prove that c is the same as a followed by b. So, um, reflection in the x-axis. Reflection in the x-axis is. Oh, we've actually got this here. We reflection in the x-axis was this one. So the x this this um, point stays the same at one zero, and this one goes down to zero one minus one. 
Friction on the y-axis, and it flips this one over, so we go to minus one zero, and that stays at zero one. Rotation, 180 degrees, is this one here. Minus one zero, zero minus one. Okay, so A followed by B. A followed by B is actually B A, which is equal to minus one zero zero one times by one zero zero minus one. We will buy that out. Hopefully, I've left the space. Actually, this should rub that out because I might need more space. I'm going to put the details on this. So we've got minus one times one plus zero times zero. Then we've got zero times zero, one plus one times zero. And on this one, we've got minus one times zero plus zero times minus one. Then we've got zero zeros plus one lot of minus one. And that gives us minus one plus zero, zero plus zero, um, zero plus zero, zero plus minus one, which is equal to C. Okay, so that's that's transformations matrices there's not much they can ask about these. These, these are, you know, if you've done four or five of these questions, they they all start to look the same. Um, once you've got the idea of transformations being the, the transformation of these two points, then hopefully it becomes fairly straightforward.